the end of January, heading into the February dead period. Penn State football is going to go out quietly, right? You know, quiet end to January. Nope. Back here with breaking news on the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel. I'm Thomas Frank Carr, recruiting insider Ryan Snyder with me because Penn State has another commitment. Ryan, where are we going today? We're going 2025 <laughs> is where we're going today. Seems like a long way off, man, but recruiting is uh, always moving faster. And, and, and Penn State gets what I think is going to end up being a really good commitment. Uh, we, we can talk about early commitments and all that stuff as we progress here. But for right now, getting a guy like Jalen Matthews, 6'5", 273, offensive tackle out of Tom's River North in, uh, of course, Tom's River, New Jersey. I mean, this is a player who... I, I want to speak with Charles about it a little bit more, but but, but already so he already has a four star rating, which in 2025 only 100 players have that rating. So right now Charles is already saying he's a top 100 prospect, and of course uh, they'll work out the individual numbers as things go on, and they were able to look at more guys. But uh, this is realistically one of the top five, I think, safe to say, offensive tackles. Uh, in the class of 2025 again incredibly early so let's see how things progress there but uh, an excellent commitment here for penn state uh, an excellent commitment for phil troutwine we'll, we'll get into phil and and what he's done here over the last uh, year and a half here uh, as this progresses but man um I, I don't think i think for all the fans out there who want offensive tackles it's a shame that Jalen matthews can't be here sooner because <laughs> they because they could certainly use him but yeah. this is this is without a doubt one of the premier offensive tackles in the country for his class or at least Things are, are cur currently trending that way. Obviously, there's a long way to go, but really good pickup here for Penn State uh, following a junior day visit this past weekend. Yeah, so take us through the timeline of how this has happened because he's been at Penn State a couple of times. I know he camped at Penn State. So um, take us through how either quickly or how this built up to this yeah. commitment. Well, I mean, There's not a whole lot with the timeline because it's so early, so soon. I mean, really, he got an offer in April. I think it was April 27th, 2022. Comes in camps at the end of July. Good camp performance there. Uh, certainly long reach. There's a lot of things that, that, that Penn State likes. You, you can get into it here with your film, film of Al's there, T. Frank. But uh, comes to camp, comes to junior day, and boom, here we are. So I, one thing I'd like to learn more, and I haven't spoken with Jalen yet. Sean's been the one speaking with him. It's just kind of what has that relationship been like over the last couple of weeks, couple of months? Because a 2025 guy... Penn State's not allowed to contact him. He has to do all the contacting himself. So I'm sure we'll have more stories on that here uh, in, in the next day or two. But uh, just with, obviously he feels comfortable. I mean, he's, he's yeah. committing pretty quickly. So, um, but that's just always intriguing to me when, you know, we haven't even got to that September period yet where coaches are allowed to start initiating conversations. Uh, obviously he feels very comfortable with Penn State moving forward. But, man, just look at his offer sheet. He already has Ohio State. He already has A&M. Uh, Georgia was another one I know uh, that there's a lot of quality schools on there so I'll, I'm just curious to see uh, when that next when September rolls around uh, how many of those schools are really trying to develop relationships with them and is he is he uh, receptive to that one thing we need to learn too is just you know was was Penn State always a school for him I, I, that's that's kind of something that I'll, I'll be asking here uh, over the next couple of days as well but man massive commitment uh, not just physically <laughs> but uh, for momentum and all that as well yeah, and of course, bluewhiteillustrated.com. Sign up for $29.99, and you get access to all the premium content so that you'll be in the know, and you'll have an idea that this stuff is coming before it even happens. Bluewhiteillustrated.com, the Lions Den message forum, that's where all, everything you want to know about recruiting. That's where you can go find it from Ryan Snyder and from Sean Fitz. Uh, by the way, like the video. Make sure you help us out here on the YouTube channel. It's totally free for you to like the video and subscribe to Blue White Illustrated so you don't miss any breaking news like, I don't know, Monday randomly at 11 a.m. when Penn State gets a commitment and then the breaking news video shortly follows. Uh, you mentioned this, and I'm going to say this one more time. 6'5 and a half, 273, great reach. He is a tackle. Penn State is getting a pure tackle prospect in Jalen Matthews. Um, now, this is the the... The part I want to ask you about is, I think, less to do with Jalen and, and maybe read the tea leaves here of um, committing this early. Penn State's had guys have committed in ninth grade before, but um, do they have to feel a certain level of confidence and comfort knowing that a guy is, is, a, is a good possibility to stay, stick with them if they accept the commitment? Or is it kind of if the kid wants to commit, the kid wants to commit? How, how does Penn State view 
early commitments like this? And do they maybe hold off on some if they don't feel super confident about it? They certainly do. I mean, they, 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 they tell guys all the time to hold off. Um, that's why I, I need to, you know, we, we, we try and do these videos immediately. And yeah. of course it's important for that, but like, I need to, to kind of get in touch with Jalen to learn more on that. Uh, so, and even cause we, we were talking with Penn state sources. We, we learned about Jalen probably about 24 hours ago. And I, I don't think like when he left campus, I don't think he was committed or anything like that. Nobody was telling us that. I think he kind of went home and, and decided on this. So what was that talk that they had? I, I would assume Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, uh, what was Penn State pushing there? I, I think that when you're a regional guy, it's it's certainly harder for them to hold off because they know he's a top prospect, right? So you, you don't want to you don't want to ever whenever you have a guy that lives within a couple hundred miles and he's a really a bona fide star, yeah, uh, you, you don't want to ever push back too hard on that. So the only guy we really have to compare is, is Matthias Barnwell, who of course committed early, ended up decommitting, and then committed back to Penn State. So uh, as long as they sign in the end, that's all that really matters, I think. So it's kind of hard to say what Jalen will do here. Um, but what I want to learn again is just like, did he grow up a Penn State fan? Like, was this something that we just didn't know about maybe that, that he was always Penn State uh, from the very beginning? Uh, that, that's just something I'll, I'll have to learn a little bit more about in, in the days ahead. But again, when you have a top guy like this, you, you can only push back so much on, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Because you don't want to ever give that, that player you know, some thoughts of, hey, maybe they don't like me uh, as much as they, you know, I thought they did. So yeah. I think Syracuse was the only visit he took, from what I understand, which was like last April. I don't know of any other visits off the top of my head. So we'll get all of that information, of course, in the recruiting show coming up uh, on Monday night. If you're watching this as it's breaking, then you can uh, check out the recruiting show with Fitz and with uh, Ryan here coming up tonight. Blue White Illustrated, 7 p.m. So you get more information on that. A double dose of recruiting in your afternoon. And of course, we'll have that again. BlueWhiteIllustrated.com as we get more information about Jalen Matthews and his commitment, which I'm telling you, we're, ha we're getting that information in real time. Somebody's working on that while we're recording. So it's really worth worth going over to Blue White Illustrated. A uh, couple things that I want to get to uh, before we kind of zoom out and take a look at the offensive line and, and kind of the picture as a whole. And I'll throw his highlights up here again on YouTube. Uh, I think he's a very interesting prospect. Tackle size, tackle length, tackle power. Um, but one thing I, I know from reading some of the things that, that Fitz had said and, and written about him is that he lost some weight to get into shape uh, in order to earn that Penn State commitment. He did that. But, I mean, you look at uh, – I'll throw up the photo here again in a minute. Pretty heavy feet uh, for a guy that is a legitimate 6'5", 273, and has been that big his whole life. So I just – from early blush – we're not doing a T. Franks film room on sophomore film. I just refuse to do that. But watching the highlights here, some things that we're going to comment on – is that I think he's going to have to work hard to keep the foot speed necessary to be, you know, a high-end tackle that is going to live up to the size he has right now. Um, but one of the things surprising here is that uh, his, his footwork and his run blocking, a little bit raw, as it, you would expect at this age, but pretty good pass protection. Just from the highlights I've seen, he's got good balance, he has a good base, he keeps himself level and even, doesn't overreach with his first kick step. You can see it right there. Just really good base and, and doesn't, have to, uh, doesn't have to press to get to the outside. So I think a right tackle, in my, ter in my idea, a long-term projection is a right tackle, but still a tackle prospect and can be a premier guy with his size. And you see the natural strength and all those things on the highlight film. Charles Power, uh, the on three consensus, they're, they're not... I'm not going to be here saying that they're wrong about any of this stuff. Like, that's obviously he's an ultra-talented player for the offensive line with that size. But you look at one of the things I always look at, and I'm going to throw it up here just quickly, is uh, you see him in his three-point stance for his 40-yard uh, dash. You see how big his lower legs are? Like, those are some tree trunks. Now, that's a lot of strength. But like I said, he's going to have to take, uh, I think um, he's going to work very hard on his athleticism to keep himself athletic enough to play tackle, which he's already done. And I think that's a part of the conversation about proving that he can be the guy that he's built up to be. So Penn State getting a really good commitment and, and showing the early signs of being a great prospect. And with offensive linemen and any player in general, there's a long way to go. And we'll learn more information as he develops both as an athlete and a football player. But let's talk about Phil Troutwine. Um, New Jersey native, 
I believe. That's where he's from originally. And here's a guy from New Jersey that commits to Penn State football. A good uh, connection there, uh, getting into that new northern New Jersey region. But more importantly, this is the third cycle in a row he's either had the first or one of the first commitments in the class and a guy that's a high-profile uh, player. Alex Birchmeyer, Cooper Cousins is an excellent potentially five play position player. And now uh, you've got Jalen Matthews. Just where's your view of the work that Phil Troutwine is doing um, on the recruiting trail and, and, and his ability to find and target these guys early? Yeah. So uh, the clarify Trout grew up in South Jersey, uh, South this Jersey, is a North Sorry. Jersey guy. And, and that's fine. No, you mean, you're right. You said New Jersey. I just kind of uh, agreeing with you or give him more specific. He grew up in Voorhees Township, which is like outside of Philadelphia. Uh, he, he he recruits like all in North Jersey, all those uh, top programs up there. Stacy Collins helps a little bit in that area too. Um, so, I mean, this 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 commitment here is is certainly pretty much all Trout wine. Uh, I want to make sure he, he gets credit for that. The reason I'm also want to clarify too, though, is like Donko and Birchmeyer, now you got to give uh, Jaywan Slater a lot of credit for those two as well. He does that region. Jaywan's a excellent recruiter so i want to make sure uh both those guys get their credit for for those two as well not the trout didn't uh crush it with those guys too he did but yeah you're looking at five straight offensive linemen uh when you go back um to birchmeyer donko and javen you have cooper cousins in 2024 now you have Jalen matthews uh, those are five straight on 300 four-star players so uh I don't know how you can push back or be upset with that. Uh, if you look back at just Penn State's recruiting over the years, you know, they've always sprinkled in, you know, a few, uh, I don't want to say project players, but, you know, guys just don't have quite the the kind of clout that, that yeah. the last five commitments that we've seen. So um, I think he's crushing it right now on the recruiting trail. We'll see what happens with Chimney Onu here uh, over the next 48 hours or so. Uh, that's something I'm trying to learn more about. Obviously, he's coming off that old Miss visit. Where does he stand with a few things? Uh, haven't haven't gotten a whole lot of Chimney yet, but we will flown soon. But if he gets Chimney too, there's another. There's there's a six, uh, four star on 300 player here. And of course, you can go on to Kevin Haywood and a bunch of other 2024 guys that I think are going to probably end up here. And man, you're talking about potentially seven or eight. Uh, four-star commitments here in a, in a what 18 month span something like that so trout line's doing a great job man i think when you when you look at on the field too that and the, and the progression you saw from the offensive line this year uh he is certainly if you haven't been won over by by trout line and, and the progression that that you've seen there i don't know what's wrong with you i mean i understand that first year was hard and and first impressions are always important but what we've seen over the last month or excuse me uh, over the last year I don't know how anybody couldn't be uh, excited or, or happy about the development and the progress you're seeing on the offensive front. And we'll see how all that comes together. Of course, bluewhiteillustrated.com for more information early. Uh, the traditional National Signing Day coming up on the 1st, so make sure you're around for that information as well. I'm Thomas Ryan Carr. That's Ryan Snyder. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on. Give us the early reaction to Jalen Matthews committing to the Nittany Lions. We will be back, as I said, with the recruiting show at 7 p.m. tonight. If you're watching this on replay, you can check that out as well. And then our live show coming up tomorrow night as well. Blue White Illustrated on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything because we're not going away because football's not going away. We'll be right here.